Hello and welcome to Rajya Sabha Television. I am Vishal Dahiya and you're watching our special show Reset India where we talk about all the sectors of uh, Indian economy what all needs to be done there in those sectors. So today our focus will be the pharma sector. Today we're going to talk about Indian pharmaceutical companies. Where do we stand? What exactly needs to be done to bring that uh, reset uh, more in this particular sector and one recent decision on this aspect has been the PLI scheme uh, announced by the government of India for Indian pharma sector. So we'll, uh, we'll, we'll look at uh, you know all aspects uh, and uh, we have uh, two uh, very important guests with us as well for uh, more details on this. Mr. Randeep Rinwa is joining us. He's uh, Joint Secretary, Department of Pharmaceuticals, Government of India. We're also joined by Mr. Pradeep Multani, Vice President, Senior Vice President at the PhD Chamber of Commerce and Chairman of uh, Multani Pharmaceuticals Limited. Uh, welcome both of you gentlemen to Rajya Sabha TV. Before I come to you, Mr. Rinwa and Mr. Pradeep, let us also give our viewers a bit of a, you know, a lowdown on what exactly is the PLI scheme. Let's look at uh, the, the salient features here and then we'll ask Mr. Rinwa to go ahead and further, you know, explain that to us. So if you, uh, if you look at your screen, then, uh, you know, this particular scheme for uh, the pharma industry is to benefit domestic manufacturers uh, and help in creating employment. Uh, the two key objectives there and improve accessibility, affordability, of medical products for the consumers, promote production of high value products as well, increase value addition in exports, uh, also generating more employment for both skilled and unskilled personnel. Also promoting innovation for uh, development of uh, the Computer aspect, bringing in investment of 15,000 crore rupees in pharmaceutical sector. Obviously, you know, more investments will result in uh, more innovation, more research, and obviously will give it uh, uh, more spur to the entire industry. So these are some of the key highlights, some of the key features there. Let's now, uh, you know, bring in our uh, panelists here, our guests uh, with us. Uh, and let me begin with you, uh, Mr. Rinwa. Let's, let's start by elaborating on these pointers which we showed to our viewers specifically with respect to the PLI scheme and also the overview of the Indian pharmaceutical industry. Thank you. Thank you, Vishal, for inviting me to this program. And uh, the Indian pharmaceutical industry is known as world over as the pharmacy of the world. The reason being we produce very good quality medicines at very affordable prices. And uh, many countries, developing countries of the world, such as countries in Africa, uh, have made use of low price, good quality medicines of India, made in India to combat uh, deadly diseases like HIV, AIDS, etc. And uh, it's, uh, the viewers would be uh, happy to note that even uh, not only develop, con developing countries, but even well regulated markets like the United States of America the exports of uh, India account for more than uh, about 50% go to well-regulated markets. So we are uh, very good as far as quality is concerned. And uh, if we talk about U.S. Food Drug Administration approved plants outside the United States of America, India is a country with the maximum number of U.S. FDA approved plants. Uh -huh. And in pharmaceutical sector, uh, the, the domestic market is about... Uh, 20 billion US dollars and same is the exports, uh, the value of exports that we do per year. So it's 50-50 as far as domestic sales and exports are concerned. Okay. And pharmaceutical sector earns a lot of foreign exchange for India and uh, we are proud of this industry and to give a boost to, further boost to this industry, uh, the government has uh, come out with production linked incentive scheme for okay. bulk drugs which came out last year and this year uh, we have come out with a new scheme worth 15,000 crores uh, called PLI schemes for pharmaceuticals. Okay, I will we'll come to the PLI scheme part, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Rinba, but uh, since you, you know, gave us an overview of what exactly the situation is in the for Indian pharma industry, let's also take the industry viewpoint on, on the same aspect. Uh, Mr. Pradeep Multani, you know, from your point of view, from industry's point of view, sir, how would you view, uh, uh, you know, the, the Indian pharmaceutical industry, the way uh, our, our prowess is and where do we stand vis-a-vis -vis the global standards and the outcomes? 
thank you. Uh, basically, the Indian pharmaceutical industry, as Mr. Rinwa mentioned, we are the pharmacy of the world. And world over, we are known for our outstanding quality. We have had major issues previously in the past with re regard to the dumping by the Chinese companies because they have, by subsidizing Chinese, Ch Chinese companies, they have been able to make our Indian uh, industries non-competitive, absolutely uncompetitive. So now with this PLI scheme, one strongly feels that yes, we will get a level playing field because all the Indian industry needs is a level playing field and ease of doing business so that we can take, I think we can take on the best in the world. And we can definitely increase quality products and also value-wise products also we can grow up in a very, very big way. Okay, okay, definitely. And that prowess has been, uh, you know, demonstrated time and again in the past uh, few years we've seen. And the numbers, figures which were quoted by Mr. Rinwa are also a clear indication, clear example of what the uh, situation is. Uh, let's now move on to these, you know, the, these government uh, schemes, specifically if you're looking at the produc uh, production linked incentive scheme, which has been recently, you know, announced uh, uh, by the uh, cabinet. Uh, what is the motive behind that, one, Mr. Rinwa, and two, what are the key highlights which will then, uh, you know, result in implementation of uh, effective implementation so that those those motives, those goals can be reached? Uh, Vishal, the objectives of uh, bringing out this scheme is to promote production and exports in the sector, bring more investments in the sector and create employment opportunities through the sector and also to create global champions uh, by uh, supporting uh, the Indian manufacturers. And if you see in the scheme, we have given three categories of products. Uh -huh. The first category is of those products which require more R&D, more investment, are difficult to make. The second category is of the bulk drugs. And the third category is of the uh, medicines which are already being produced, uh, but the therapeutic groups are very important for Indian population and world, such as anti-cancer, anti-HIV, anti-diabetic drugs, and so on. The idea is to, to give incentives to manufacturers for incremental production of these selected drugs mm -hmm. compared to the production in year 2019-20. And the incentives will be given for six years. The idea is to incentivize manufacturers to increase production of these selected drugs so that uh, India can go on to a high value uh, uh, products from the simple generics in which we are champions in the world. We want our industry to go to the next higher level, which will bring more value in terms of high value exports and would also make these medicines affordable in the country if they start producing such patented drugs or complex generics, biopharmaceuticals in the country. Okay, okay. Mr. Mr. Bultani, uh, you know, from your point of view, from industry's point of view, the way this, this entire scheme has been formulated, as Mr. Rinwo was pointing out, you know, specific target groups have been made, then uh, the, the quantum of incentive has also been specified out there, and the, the objective of the scheme. So, how would you look at, how does the industry look at uh, this particular scheme, specifically in today's period uh, when we're trying to overcome the COVID uh, effect? See, firstly, of course, any scheme which the government offers industry is more than welcome. However, you know, basically the scheme says that uh, this scheme is for, the, for, the, for enhancing India's manufacturing capabilities and enhancing exports. Uh -huh. Atam Nirbhar Bharat. Now, if we, the scheme giving, offering the 10% initially, then it gets reduced, comes down to 6%. You see, industry would definitely like that this scheme, if it had been for a flat period of 10 years, because why we are requesting for 10 years is because if we have to enhance our production capacity, then to be able to go through those 30, 35 departments, it, it is a phenomenal task on the ground level. So it takes minimum two to three years to be able to get all those requisite permissions. That mm -hmm. is first. And secondly, of course, you know, getting land allotment, even build, uh, building uh, more infrastructure, ordering machines. The starting point 
for with for this achieving this purpose will take 2 3 years so industry would like a flat 10 years time from date of start of production okay so that so that we know we can plan it out that after 2 3 years or we can start working on this enhanced capacity and we will have 10 clear 10 clear clean years in which we will get 10% performance linked incentive on incremental uh, production from the government okay and also what we would really like is that uh, they have given you know 10% for two categories and 5% for one category mm -hmm. i think a flat 10% for all the categories would be very much in order because this 10% which the government is giving to us with the sort of revenues which we will generate the government will be more than compensated by gst and employment generation and all sort of taxes so if it was a flat 10% spread over those 10 years i think in industry would definitely welcome that okay okay if let's, i may let's, also add another point if i may also add another please. point you see looking at the past history of china now that china knows what is being offered to indian indian industry the indian government should kindly ensure that again china will not resort to dumping the way it did 15 20 years ago when india had excellent apis production capacity but thanks to that dump dumping the indian industry got wiped out so we have to ensure china doesn't dump in india and also it doesn't root its products through third world countries okay this is my line of thinking okay, please okay. from let's, the let's, industry let's, point of view let's let's take those suggestions uh, to uh, mr rinwa so mr rinwa what i'm saying is that uh, you know the suggestions which are coming in from uh, mr uh, multani and quite significant as well uh, we would uh, like to have your response on these two aspects one is uh, as the industry is suggesting that uh, the entire incentive should be a flat 10% for a period of 10 years so that it becomes easy for the industry to go ahead and implement and then reap benefits uh, and eventually for the government also to have uh, uh, the the incremental benefits there and the second aspect is to protect the industry from the issue of dumping uh, thank you vishal i would like to say that uh, we have the department of pharmaceutical has prepared the scheme after a series of consultations with the uh, representatives of the industry the indian pharmaceutical alliance indian drug manufacturers associations bulk drug manufacturers associations so these timelines six years uh, support and the uh, rate of uh, incentive have all been discussed in detail because we had the experience of our earlier pli scheme that we came out last year the production linked incentive scheme for bulk drugs so based on the experience of that scheme as well as the inputs of the industry we came out with this scheme uh -huh. as far as the issue of for dumping is concerned uh, the government is mindful of the the possible uh, uh, scenario or threat of such uh, uh, a dumping um, uh, to take place for that we have sufficient uh, policy instruments with us we have director general of trade remedies which can look into the complaints of dumping and other than that uh, the options of uh, using the tariff uh, uh, option that we have is always with the government so on that account uh, we have assured the industry and the investors that there should be no concern on that account the government is Uh, ready and willing to take all possible steps to to face uh, to, in, to help the industry face any such eventuality and we are sure that uh, uh, the industry would not face any problem on that account okay okay so so dumping guy uh, is uh, being taken care of the issue of dumping pli scheme is one aspect out there apart from that mr denwai if if you do a holistic review of the kind of policies which have been put in place uh, uh, you know uh, for quite some time now uh, if you look at the entire pharmaceutical industry then how would you see uh, you know these policies bringing that incremental change and adding on every new policy adding on to the previous one so if you could just you know uh, make our viewers understand the 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 chain of uh, links which which establishes uh, between all these policies and then culminates uh, towards the pli incentive scheme which has just been recently announced uh vishal first of all i would like to share with the viewers that the exports of uh, drugs from india if we see the 
three quarters from 1st April 2020 to 31st December 2020, that is during the pandemic. It has increased by 12.5% compared to the exports uh, in the corresponding period of the previous year when there was no pandemic. So we, our industry is doing very well on that account. And the government has constantly been uh, coming out with policy interventions, with schemes to support the industry. As I mentioned that last year we came out with four very important schemes, the production linked incentive scheme for bulk drugs, for medical devices. We came out the bulk drug park scheme where three mega bulk drug parks will be established by state governments with support of central government, four medical devices parks. And now we're continuously engaging with the industry stakeholders as well as various regulators for pharmaceuticals as well as for medical devices to ensure that unnecessary regulatory compliance burden is reduced, duplicacy of submitting information to various regulators is reduced, there is a, a clear-cut predictable regulatory pathway, and the effort is to create a single window of regulatory system for the manufacturer so that okay. they do not have to run to each department for taking approvals of the various kinds. Now, we know that uh, pharmaceutical is a highly regulated sector. Uh, we have the uh, Central Drug Standard Control Organization for ensuring safety and efficacy of drugs. We have the National Pharmaceutical Pricing Authority, which fixes the ceiling prices of essential drugs and monitors price increases of non-scheduled drugs. We have the state pollution control boards which look after the pollution related uh, aspects of bulk drugs, which is a highly polluting industry, so and so forth. So the effort continuously is to ensure that the regulations are streamlined so that unnecessary time delays do not happen as Mr. Multani mentioned. For example, a long standing demand of bulk drug industry for years was that the approval, the prior environment clearances that the pollution control boards give should not be given in the name of individual products for a particular bulk drug, rather than a single category of bulk drugs and intermediates, uh -huh. so that if they want to change some products, they should not have to go again back to the state pollution control boards to take uh, environment clearance and spend months in that uh, action. Uh -huh. Similarly, for other kind of regulators, uh, various kinds of uh, uh, actions have been taken. The license uh, that is given to a manufacturer uh, now is in perpetuity unless it is uh, cancelled on basis of some complaints or some inspections. Okay. Similarly, for export related various kind of permissions, many uh, liberalized actions have been taken, uh, which would which help the industry in coming out with products faster. Uh, so that they can focus on their core uh, area of production rather than the regulation related uh, complex issues. Okay. A committee has been formed in Ministry of Health uh, uh, of all the regulators of which pharmaceuticals was also a part which, which had examined the issue of uh, how we can reform the regulatory system. The Department of Pharmaceutical has formed a committee on medical devices where all the regulators, be it CDSCO, Atomic Energy Regulatory Board, okay. or the BIS, or Ministry of Electronics, they are all NPP mm -hmm. are on board, along with industry associations. So all these uh, schemes, as well as policy measures, in, in uh, pharmaceuticals, we have a foreign direct investment up to 74% on automatic route. That is, investor need not come to government for any permission. Mm -hmm. Beyond 74%, up to 100% is also allowed. There, the Department of Pharmaceuticals gives approval within a time-bound manner. For medical devices, foreign direct investment is allowed up to 100% on automatic route. So okay. there are many measures which the government has taken for new companies that are formed and start production before 31st March 2023. Okay. The corporate income tax is just 15%, very okay. competitive vis-a-vis -vis the competing economies. Okay. So all these measures have slowly but surely uh, led to uh, an enthusiasm uh, within the industry and investors regarding India as a destination where uh, manufacturing of pharmaceuticals and medical devices should take place. Even in the pandemic, you must have seen that uh, for all essential drugs, for whether it's hydroxychloroquine, paracetamol, favipiravir, etc., 
which came out uh, at various points of time. And India not only produced it sufficiently for its own people, we exported uh, these drugs across the country. Definitely. That Even has the been vaccines, that, whether that is, it's COVID shield or Covaxin, uh, we are not only providing to our population, but across the country. So India's position as a reliable provider of medicines, even during critical times, has solidified and it has earned a lot of goodwill for India across the world. And this would really help us because the countries of the world are now thinking of diversifying their okay. supply chains. And in that scenario, India stands a good chance of uh, taking up this opportunity. And that's why government is uh, really coming out uh, with every month, passing time, new incentives, new schemes, new policy decisions that okay. would support our industry in taking uh, use of this opportunity. Okay, in, definitely. In that's, that's, that's quite a holistic uh, sum up there by Mr. Rinwa. And obviously, he's, he's right when he says that there is a lot of opportunity at global level. Let's also, you know, uh, take uh, one final comment from Mr. Multani as well. Mr. Multani, th that was a quite a you know, long and holistic list of what exactly is being done and all aspects it almost it covered. Uh, so, from the industry's point of view, are there any more suggestions which you would, you know, want to give to the government, uh, uh, since Mr. Rinwa is here, to the Department of Pharmaceuticals, wherein, you know, in future course, uh, the, uh, if the policy is further, if uh, a tweak is required, maybe tweaked in a better manner? Uh, whatever Mr. Rinwa has said, one totally seconds that the intention of our central government is outstanding. Atam Nirbhar Bharat, we need to be, we have seen in COVID-19, that we have to stand in our, on our own to feed. So we strongly support whatever policies have been announced by the central government. You see, India today is the third largest in the world by volume and 14th largest in terms of value. Now, our pharmaceutical sector can be a game changer like the IT sector was for the country. All what we... All what we need is that whatever the central government is saying goes down to the state's level. Okay. There should be definitely ease of doing business and total reduction in cost of doing business. Today, industry wants to move out of China, but how much of industry has reached India so far? So now we need to really work on that. And like I said, just like the IT sector, our healthcare sector is simply outstanding. Give us a level playing field and we can be definitely number one, two, three in the world. Okay, definitely. That sums up a lot of aspects there. You know, a level playing field, something which uh, towards which the government is working uh, with its policies out there. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Pradeep Multani, as well as uh, Mr. Navdeep Rinwa there for giving us both sides of, uh, you know, the view here, both viewpoints, not only from uh, the government's uh, perspective as to what policies are, but also from the industry's perspective as to how those policies, uh, uh, those decisions uh, uh, those tweaks which are being made from time to time are actually helping on the ground and can be further implemented in a better way. So this uh, was a holistic overview of the Indian pharmaceutical industry, the way things are going on right now, the kind of policies which are there and specifically the PLI, the Production Linked Incentive Scheme, which has recently been approved by the government for this particular sector and the kind of impact it might have on the industry and also Indian global, Indian pharmaceutical industry in the global scenario. We'll come back again with a different topic, different aspect of the Indian economy, different sector, and we'll try and find out how that particular sector can be reset and reassessed to try and achieve the goals of the future. So stay tuned to Rajasabha Television. Thank you.